start. Sir, welcome. My name is Matt Fash, United States Navy Memorial. Okay. Thank you for sitting with us. If I can please have your name and rank. Okay, my name is William Steen. My rank was ABH3. Fantastic. And sir, if you could please just start us off when you first got involved with the Navy and bring us to when you were discharged. Okay, I uh, graduated from high school in 1966, and uh, the reason I went in the Navy because I had a brother that was on the USS Boxer in the Korean War. Okay. And it really impressed me, so I wanted to get on a Hope to get on a carrier. Yeah. So after boot camp, I was lucky enough to get assigned to one. And uh, got on it, and they made me put me in the aviation department, and that's where I stayed for the next three years on there. Now, what ship did they send you to? What was your first? The USS Hornet. The Hornet. It was the one they sent me to. Fantastic. And uh, it was a big ship when I walked up that gangplank. It's <laughs> for a 17-year-old, 18-year-old kid. It's pretty big and scary to do something like that, but all the sailors had to go through it. And from there, I worked my ranks up from an air, aircraft handler, which we called a blue shirt, and then we went on a first, in 1967, we went on a Westpac cruise and did a tour of, of Vietnam, which was like seven months. And we came back from that, and then we went into dry dock for about six months too, and that was quite a thing to see that thing, you know, from the bottom yep. and the screws and everything and, and work on. Well, then we turned around in 68, went back over to Vietnam for another tour. Okay. And we were just coming back from that, and from 90 degree day, and they started handing us full cold weather gear, and we couldn't figure out what it was. Uh, they gave us word that one of our reconnaissance planes had been shot down. Small conflict going on, and we uh, headed into that. And I remember waking up the next morning, and as far as you could see, out in the seas, there were ships all around us. Oh wow! And uh, that that was a part of history. And uh, I remember guys taking pictures of a Russian badger flying over the top of the ship. Wow! And uh, it had everybody pretty stirred up, and one of the our uh, escort destroyers was in a collision with one of the Soviet ones. Oh, really? That's how close it was. Wow, was this in the Talking Valve? Where, where was that? No, it was in uh, North Korea. North Korea. Sea oh, by wow. North Korea. Wow. And we found out why they gave us that cold the clothing because the salt water was just stiff. It was so cold in that thing. Oh, wow. And uh, so that that was very interesting. Well, then we were. When we came back from that, is in 1969, is when we found out we were picked up to uh, pick up an Apollo wow. recovery mission, and so that was in the beginning of 1969. We we went out and we practiced hundreds and hundreds of times for this, and by then I was a, a yellow shirt and I'd run an elevator, and I was an aircraft director, so I got picked to run the elevator, which. When you're out at sea, it's folded up sideways against the ship. Okay. So when we, uh, when the splashdown occurred, when the capsule got in the water, we had to take the ship up alongside the capsule, and I had to fold this elevator down okay. so a crane could lift it up on onto that elevator. And then uh, they unhooked it, the cables of the forklift, and then carried it into the rest. So. Uh, it was, I can't really say so much about it. There was so many, every television outfit was there and there was, it was so crowded on there with cameras. And a lot of the people that I know have seen it on TV, but we were practicing all the time and really didn't know what was going on until it actually happened. Yeah. And, and in the meantime, like this, when I wasn't running the elevator, we were cleaning the hangar deck control for President Nixon to come aboard. Oh, wow. We had to paint it white, didn't have it spotless for him, and uh, practiced his march coming down the hangar deck to greet the astronauts. So after that went pretty good, then they uh, picked the capsule. The helicopter 66 picked up the, the astronauts and brought them aboard and uh, brought them down to the hangar bay, and they automatically put them in an Airstream confinement trailer. Right. 
and then there was another confinement trailer for the doctors and other people in there that would check them over and everything. And then uh, and we, uh, after that, we steamed for Hawaii to, to let them off for there. Wow. So then I guess we were pretty good about that. We got turned around in November and went and picked up Apollo 12. Wow. So, so that was Apollo 12 that you had picked up? The first one was Apollo 11 Apollo with 11. Neil Armstrong on it. Wow. So I guess that's where the history was in, the first man on the moon. Yeah. And uh, so the Hornet was right there. did a lot of history for that. Wow. And then when we did uh, Apollo 12, we were closer. I guess we were in a half a mile when that one splashed down. So you could see it. Did you see it coming down? The, yeah, you could see the, the parachutes wow. there coming down in the water. So I guess that's pretty much that episode, well then we were, I guess we were kind of picked to do Apollo 13, but that's when we got our notice that they were gonna decommission the ship. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. So then uh, they brought us from, we were stationed out of Long Beach, California, and they brought us to Bremerton, Washington mm -hmm. to start the process of stripping it down and scrapping it out. Yeah. So at that time, the work on it and everything, and it was coming to the end, and. At times, there was only three of us on the whole ship at once for fire watches. Really? And we had to go through all the decks, and just one person in that with no noise going on is, is a pretty it's eerie, 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 eerie feeling to walk around that thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So there was, uh, that was in uh, about May, end of May in 1970, and uh, our job was done there, and we walked off the ship. Wow and said goodbye to it, which we thought was going to be in the scrap pile. Yes. And it was just years ago that I found out that it was bought up and still going, so made contact in the magazines and everything, and then that's where I found the, the Hornet Club and, wow. and got uh, interested in This is my second reunion here, and I've learned a lot of history from the men that have been on it. Right. So, Fantastic. Were you able to, have you been back to the Hornet? I went to the Hornet last year. Tell me what that was like. How did that feel? It, very emotional when yeah. I've seen it again. And uh, I, uh, I had my yellow sweatshirt and skull cap that I wore on the Apollo recovery mission. Oh, wow. And I asked the people there if I could get a picture at that elevator that I run. Well, he, he let me take pictures. Well, the next day when I went for the ceremony, over the loudspeaker, I heard my name called, and I said, well, this can't be happening. He called me down to number one elevator, made me put on that sweatshirt again, and he let me run the elevator and wow. bring a jet down from the flight deck. Wow. So I had a lot of, I don't emotion on yeah. that one. Oh, yeah. And my, if something, I've got the pictures to pass down, too. Oh, fantastic. For, my family and children and grandchildren. So. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now after your assignment on the Hornet, where did the Navy take you from there? Uh, I was discharged. Discharged? Yes. Wow. I had my four years in there. Right. So, A busy four years? Yeah, it was. Wow. Now, the Very Hornet. busy with two, you know, two West Packs and two Apollos. That's a lot. Yeah. So. Now, what was life going like from being on Navy life? And now you're, you're a civilian. Was yes. there a big transition? No, not for me. No. But the transition really is now in life because that history, people don't know about it right. anymore. Right. And uh, just like I'm learning here about all the history of what really happened in the war. Yeah. You know? And uh, that's, that's what it's about to keep right. it going. Right. It's very important. Um, I want to ask you about when the Hornet was taking part in the, in the Vietnam War. Right. How was the mood aboard ship? Oh, it was very good. Yeah. You know, we weren't in the battle mm -hmm. like, you know, the other wars that yeah. the Hornet was in. We were pretty safe out there and the planes got shot up and, right. you know, but it was, you know, it was an experience. I don't think nobody overreacted about right. it. Right. 
but when we got home from Vietnam, the people, you know, yeah. Didn't Tell me a little bit about that. That's, that's an important piece of history that a lot of people try not to talk about, and no, it's important for Americans to realize. People didn't recognize you, really, even though we were in the Navy, and it, it just they didn't recognize you, and that kind of hurt. Yeah, that's, that's a terrible part of you know, history. And later, I, I learned I was on a, on a famous ship, and I wanted I wanted to tell people that. Yeah. And I've told them ever since. Good. So. Fantastic. Now, how about, how was Mood, the Mood one, when Apollo 11 came down? And you, you had Neil Armstrong aboard the ship. Yes. That had to be, the crew must have been. It was, it was very, very exciting. And for me to be right there, you know, I was yeah. within 50 feet of them. Wow. And uh, President Nixon gave their interview through that window. Yep. Yeah. And, uh,